Shane in Knoxville. Uh, Shane, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. How you doing, Mike? Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, Shane. Now, I, 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 wanted, I want you to dig in as an Eagle fan to this whole thing. What are they? Well, I, I believe a couple of years ago they were uh, they were talking about the Georgia defense is uh, an NFL level defense, and and we picked up a lot of their main pieces, and I, I think that they've had you know a couple of years to grow into NFL level players. Are you are you, are you doubt, really are you doubting? Are you doubting? Oh, oh, you're saying they're going to have breakout seasons? Oh, I thought you yeah, were going I the other way with be, it. Yeah, I think, I mean, bold prediction, I think they're going to be a top-five defense. Whoa! With, with Vic Fangio unlocking all of their strengths, I think the chemistry, yeah, I think it's going to be something to behold. I like it because there's just many people saying on the other side, well, maybe these Georgia players weren't as advertised because it's taking too long for them. Like They were supposed to be immediately help. And, uh, they, you know, they, it's been taking them a while. But you think this is the year where they uh, they, they, they become a ripe tomato? Yeah, absolutely. I think N'Kobe Dean's going to be one of the best linebackers in the league. Whoa. Yeah, yeah he's going to maybe. Maybe you're going a little too far, Shane. He may not uh, even be a starter. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> he may not even be a starter uh, right now. Forget about Nolan Smith. Because we're looking at the four guys now from, from that, uh, that Georgia team that were really supposed to pay immediate dividends. And they really have not yet. Uh, you know, Carter early on in last season, and then he wilted. I think having too many linebackers is a good problem to have. I mean, better than not having any at all. Well, who said they had too many? <laughs> we, we don't know if they have too many yet because we, we don't know if the ones that are going to start are going to perform. I just believe that they are. All right. Nicole, See, I like Nicole it. You're... I like it. You're very he has optimistic. A high level of intelligence, and mm -hmm. I think that he's going to really pick it up this year. I like it. I like the optimism coming from you because that overpowers the stuff that we've gone over, where all these naysayers are out there going, you know, they're eleventh, uh, and then you know the, the decline is there's going to be a decline from even up from eleven and six because that's the way the numbers would roll. So I like to hear that out. That's an optimistic Eagle fan, Bill. It is an optimistic Eagles fan. I like what he said that he thinks they're going to be a top five defense. I don't know if they'll get that high coming off of being the 30th ranked defense. Mm -hmm. But here's my concern with this team. I've heard a lot of fans talk about, well, the offense is going to be so good. It doesn't really matter how good the defense is. You've heard that before from fans. Yeah. Well, here's the problem. And I've given these stats before. The Philadelphia Eagles in franchise history, Mike, have never been to an NFC championship game without being a top 10 defense. They've never been to a Super Bowl without being a top 7 defense. And you look at the last 10 Super Bowl winners. Eight of the 10 had top 8 defenses. So I know we all want to look at the offense and think they're going to be dominant. I don't think you get to a Super Bowl without having at least a top 10 defense. And can they make that big of a leap this year with Vic Fangio? you, you got to stop the other team, or, or else you got to score 35 points a game. Which we thought last year, mm -hmm. oh, the offense is going to be so good. It's okay that they let both linebackers walk, both uh -huh. safeties walk. Yep. How did that work out for them? No, you're right. So but you've got to win in 13. So, I, uh, you know, I'm the one that goes, eh, you know, I see 11. Uh, I still see 13 with this team. So you explain how you see 13 with all these questions that we've just gone over. I'm assuming, and I know what they say about assuming anything, but I'm assuming that Bryce Huff is going to be able to get after the quarterback. That Jalen Carter is going to take another leap forward. That Jordan Davis is going to show he was worthy of the first round draft pick. I'm expecting a big year. Milton Williams, mm -hmm. final year of his rookie deal. This is a big season for him contractually if he wants a payday. So I'm expecting those three defensive tackles to dominate in the middle, along with Bryce Huff coming from the edge, that hopefully that'll have a ripple effect throughout this defense. And you don't expect them to be a negative 10 turnover differential again. Mm -hmm. That killed them last year. They got to create more turnovers. If Chauncey Gardner Johnson stays healthy, that's something that he brings to the table. So that's where I'm seeing the optimism. But this could easily go the other way. Easily. Yeah, I, I, in my most optimistic periods, but they don't come very often. But in my most optimistic periods, I don't see 13 at all. I just can't. I look at the schedule. I go, no way. They're going to win 13 games. This is an 11 tops season that I see.
And that's and a, 11 and that's, may be yeah, It's good enough to win a division. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Because I don't year. expect much from Dallas. Right. So that's, that's, you know, I'm okay with that at this point. But I'm not, like, going overboard with 13. This team, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, so many things would have to go right. Everything would have to go right. Are, are fans putting too much stock into Vic Fangio, though? Like, you just heard that caller. Uh-huh. A lot of people are acting like Vic Fangio, and I'm excited for the guy. Yeah. But it's not as if this guy's had the number one defense his entire mm-hmm. career. If you look back at his numbers, Mike, over the last, like, 10 it's feast or famine. He had the 22nd ranked defense last year in terms of points. Mm-hmm. And then you go back to Denver. Okay, he was third in 2021. Yeah. Then 25th. Then 10th. Then 1st. Yeah. 9th. 24th. 20th. I mean, he's had some pretty bottom ranked defenses. So it's not as if just him alone is going to get this defense into the top 10. And um, that's, that's add that the Miami players hated him. They were celebrating <laughs> when he left. Right? So I don't know if that's going to surface at all. Uh, let me ask you.